self-lubricating properties of plastics and composites make them ideal for metal replacement in many bearing and wear applications, resulting in lower maintenance costs and reduced downtime. Therefore, one material property that engineers, designers, and maintenance personnel are usually interested in is the coefficient of friction. The coefficient of friction is a measurement of the resistance to sliding of one surface over another. In simpler terms, it measures how slick a material is. The coefficient of friction value allows for comparing the relative slickness of various materials to each other. The coefficient of friction testing can be conducted in several ways, although using a thrust washer is the most common. ASTM D3702 is the standard test method followed, and it covers the wear rate and the coefficient of friction of materials in self-lubricated rubbing contact using a thrust washer testing machine. The test is conducted by taking a thrust washer and applying a normal force down on a plastic versus typically an unlubricated polished steel. Then, applying a sliding force to get the plastic rotating. There is no unit of measure for the coefficient of friction. It is simply the ratio of the sliding force to the normal force acting on the two mating surfaces. The lower the coefficient of friction ratio, or the lower the value, the slicker the material. There are typically two main coefficient of friction values. Static coefficient of friction and dynamic coefficient of friction. The static coefficient of friction measures the ratio of the forces at initial movement from a thrust washer at rest. It's the coefficient of friction to get the movement started. The dynamic coefficient of friction measures the ratio of forces once the bearing or the mating surface is already in motion at a given speed. Typically, the static coefficient of friction is larger than the dynamic coefficient of friction because you must overcome the normal force with a more significant initial force to overcome the system at rest. Of course, once the system is in motion, the sliding force required to keep the system moving is lower, resulting in a lower dynamic coefficient of friction. Oftentimes, engineers, designers, or maintenance personnel will want a slicker material to improve the sliding properties of their components. In these cases, internally lubricated polymers enhance the wear performance and extend the life of a wear component. Different fillers can result in varying options for the static and the dynamic coefficient of friction. Stick slip is an unwanted phenomena tied to the coefficient of friction of a system. Stick slip is the jerking motion of two sliding surfaces. This occurs when the static and the dynamic coefficient of friction are too far apart from each other. To eliminate this phenomena, you will want a static and dynamic coefficient of friction that are very close to each other, resulting in a very smooth transition from at rest to sliding motion. Materials offering low to zero stick slip are often specified for wear pad applications in the sliding booms of construction and heavy equipment where smooth transitional movement is critical. The coefficient of friction will change over time with application conditions. For example, as mating materials wear during use, any change to the surface roughness will change the coefficient of friction. Also, if a system runs out of oil or grease or is left unlubricated, such changes can drastically affect the sliding performance. It's essential to keep wear surfaces clean and free of dirt or debris, and using the right material to gain the optimum sliding performance is critical. To learn more about the coefficient of friction of plastics and composites, or to help with your next wear application, please reach out. We are always happy to help. Please feel free to add your comments below, like and share this video if you found it helpful, and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.